I spend a lot of my time just reading through old trade papers and fan magazines and I found a story recently that I want to dedicate a whole video to and it's the story of a young woman named Molly O'Day and I hadn't heard of her and you probably haven't heard of her either but when she first hit the scene in the 20s she was considered at least in every review to be one of the most talented young actresses to emerge. Um, she was 16 when she got her first movie role in 1927, but as early as the very next year, a very serious tragedy struck that cut her career short. And it's a tragedy that still affects people today in the industry, so I thought it was worth a video. So this is Molly O'Day here, again, probably age 16 or 17. And this is a photo taken the very next year after tragedy had already struck. In fact, according to the caption, this is a picture of the tragedy itself. So looking at it, can, can, can you see what it is? Can, can you see what happened to her? She got fat. Yeah, so this picture you're looking at is supposedly a picture of a woman who has gotten so fat that it's threatening to end her career. So basically I became obsessed with Molly O'Day and I tracked down every article I could find on her and there were many eye-opening and ruthlessly written articles documenting her struggle to keep her career afloat. So if my findings on this subject sounds like something you'd like to hate watch, then come along with me on a journey. And if not, later. So we get our first rumblings that something is amiss in this photoplay article from June of 1928. It says, Molly O'Day was to have been given this part, but she could not get all the buttons and hooks of the costume to meet. Here's where we really get into it, in photo play, in August of 1928. The sad story of Molly O'Day, whose career was blighted by ice cream and candy. And you know what, this whole article is fascinating, as are all of them, so if anyone wants full copies, please let me know and I'll email them to you. I'm just going to read you some of my favorite excerpts. Molly O'Day is waging a battle as important to her as Waterloo was to Napoleon. To remain on the screen, she must lose 20 pounds and lose them gracefully. And then at the bottom here, this is supposedly a before and after, with the before on the left and the after on the right. I have stared at these pictures for so long, I, I, I can't even, like, I can't even see it. I would not have been able to do the Pepsi challenge on this. But it says, um, to the left you see Molly O'Day as she looked in the patent leather kid, again at the age of 16, not exactly slim, but merely pleasingly plump. This is pleasingly plump. Shed a tear for the Molly O'Day at your right. She is 20 pounds too heavy for stardom. The picture was taken before Molly went to hot springs to melt that too solid flesh. There were four big stories waiting for her as a star for next season, but in two of them, Molly had to dress up like a real lady. Did you ever see a pumpkin dressed in the evening clothes of a lady? Finally, Mr. Rocket, still believing that Molly is one actress out of 10,000, sent for his protege. Now, I wasn't there at that meeting, but I have talked with both of them, and as far as I can gather, this is just about what Mr. Rocket told Molly. Molly, you can get as fat as you please. You can eat as much as you please. You can diet as little as you please. We've done all we can. It's your life, and you have to live it. As far as we are concerned, you are through. That is, until you get down to the right physical size for our pictures. She's in Hot Springs, Arkansas when this is written, and she not only has a dietitian but a physical instructor. Hot baths every morning and evening, and three times a day, spinach and lamb chops and pineapple. Napoleon lost his battle, but Molly's Waterloo is just plain fat, and that she's determined to conquer. Things take a sinister turn in September of 1928, seen here in photo play. Basically, no diet would keep her slim, so now she's gone to a hospital and had a surgeon remove quote-unquote pounds of flesh from her hips and thighs. So basically now she's had 1920s nightmare surgery, and these dotted lines you see on her hips is where her doctor thought she should be taken in. September of 1928 is also when Variety picks up the story. On the 4th, they let you know Molly O'Day goes under knife to remove weight. Uh, Molly O'Day, who lost out with First National because of a distinct tendency to plumpness, underwent a weight-removing operation at Queen of the Angels Hospital. She will spend several weeks in the infirmary and then go on a strict diet. 
On September 11th, Variety follows up with an update that she's now recouping and will be headed back to Hot Springs Sanitarium as soon as she's able. And then on September 18th, there's an interesting article because it goes into the specifics of the stipulations with her studio contract. Because she's now been taken off salary, she's not going to go back on salary until she's lost a certain amount of weight. But they also add an additional humiliating stipulation. She's not allowed to go back on salary until she fits into her original costume from her very first movie as a 16-year-old. And so she has to put on this costume and go in front of all of the executives of First National and prove to them that she can fit into it. But happy ending. Sliced hips and legs save Miss Molly O'Day. Later, she appeared at the First National studio, weak and walking with a cane, but sylph-like and happy, and expects to see her name on the cast sheets shortly. At this point, even the New York Times is reporting on Molly's surgery. Unfortunately, I may have reported on that happy ending too soon. Two months later, in November, Photoplay notes that Molly O'Day isn't making pictures at present. She is reducing at the request of directors who don't like plump girls. And the next month in December, Variety updates us that she's still not receiving any roles. And then there's this follow-up article in Photoplay. It says, And then there is Molly O'Day. What will be the fate of the O'Day? A part of the story was recounted in the August issue of Photoplay, but what of this recent development? Molly is overweight even for a non-professional. She's 20 pounds heavier than she should have been for the screen. Her doctor believes that the operations will do no good because there is fat all over Molly's body. She is a splendid actress. Her director, her producer, her public know this. But unless she is most sylph-like, her art will be completely wasted. That is the demand of the screen. From here on out, I really only see Molly's name pop up in advertisements or articles about weight loss in general, as she's now the go-to poster child to be trotted out on these occasions. Um, and keep in mind that just like today, the magazines were just covered in weight loss ads. So here's one uh, that mentions her. It says, Molly O'Day is said to have lost 8 pounds in a little over a week on this diet which is better than having weight taken off with a hammer and cold chisel as she did before. <laughs> Hilarious. And then there's this October 1929 photo play where the cover story is called How Stars Suffer to be Beautiful. So naturally she's going to be mentioned in this one. And here it is. The plastic surgeons are as thick as their operations are painful. The world knows what Molly O'Day suffered from an operation that slashes off pounds of flesh. And then it just mentions people who had nose jobs. Ah, yes, the way of all flesh. Molly O'Day lost 12 pounds in 14 days. That's all the mention she gets there. Basically, now they're not even pretending like they're talking about her as if she's a working actress. It's just about her yo-yoing weight. And I can think of some examples of that today. By the way, I don't know if any of you noticed this while I was talking, but you can see to the left there a very casual mention that an actress has actually died on the starvation diet trying to meet a studio contract. But then it still goes ahead and gives you the specifics of the diet in case you want to try it yourself at home. Shout out to my girl Fanny Bryce for eating the whole 18 days in 5 minutes. Hollywood remembers how too many pounds almost ruined the career of Molly O'Day and her heroic and unavailing struggle to become slender. The last really relevant thing I found was in 1931 in the LA Times. Molly was too fat and continued to be so, although several rigorous campaigns reduced her for the no for the nonce? Was that a word in 1931? But it was always such a short-lived nonce that directors hated to take chances. Often they began a picture with this girl who has temperament, beauty, and undeniable talent, only to discover in the rushes that their heroine was steadily becoming more and more heavy. One film looked as if two girls had made it, an investigation revealed that Molly broke through when her starved body cried out for good old solid food. Molly O'Day's last film was in 1935, which means her career was over at the age of 24. But I did find one final article on her, her obituary from 1998. And naturally, in a document that's supposed to sum up the worth of an entire person's life. It's still focused on her weight. And quoted an article from the LA Examiner after one of her weight losses in the 20s. It says, 
A new Molly appeared on the scene, a Molly slim, sylph-like, and joyous, a Molly whose weight had toppled from a hundred and forty horrible pounds, my weight, by the way, to a more than bearable one twenty, where it remains. I can only hope for such kind words in my obituary.